Take 56. Mmm. Ah, let's go. Let's do it. As many of you may already know, about six months ago I started building this bike trail in my backyard. And since then, I haven't had very much time with work, travel, and everything else in life to put much work into the trail. And honestly, it's starting to show. The trail's becoming overgrown in places, and I haven't added anything else to the trail yet. But today, that is all going to change. First, I'm going to start out with some quick trail maintenance, then I'm going to jump right into building the next feature on this trail. The next thing on the agenda to be built is definitely going to be a ramp. But before I build anything, I need to run out to the store and pick up some supplies. So I'm going to divide this ramp build into three parts. The first part is going to be the ramp build, the second is going to be building the landing, and then the third is going to be building the center tabletop section of the jump. The wood that I ended up buying for the ramp section of the build was three 12 foot long 2x10s and three 8 foot long 2x4s, all pressure treated. So the way that most people build ramps and the way I built ramps in the past is by using plywood as the sides and plywoods as the surface of the jump, just like this little mini kicker right here. As you can see, I cut two plywood sides and I brace it together with 2x4s. None of this wood is pressure treated, so if I were to leave this ramp outside, it would just rot out. So I want to make this a little bit differently. So for the sides and the top surface of this ramp, I'm using these 2x10s, which are pressure treated, and once they're stained, they'll withstand years and years of being outside. To start out, I'm just going to make some quick measurements on the 2x10s, and then draw out the sides of the ramp. I'll be sure to draw up some blueprints and attach a link or photo in the description. That way you guys can follow along with the specific measurements if you decide to build this exact same ramp. The next thing I'm doing is drawing the transition for the ramp. Uh, the transition is just the, the curve of the side of the ramp, and for this particular ramp, I'm using a 8 foot transition. So the first thing I'm going to do to draw the transition is attach a sharpie to the end of the piece of wood. Um, as you can see, I'm just rigging up away with some duct tape and whatever I have lying around. It doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to be attached to the end of the piece of wood. Once that's in place, I'm going to measure exactly 8 feet from the point of the sharpie, back the piece of wood, and then put a screw in at the 8 foot mark. That's going to be the pivot point for the 8 foot transition. Next I'm going to attach the base piece of wood into the 2x10s. That's just going to hold everything in place temporarily while I make my measurement for the transition. Then I'm just going to draw the curve of the ramp with the sharpie on the end of the piece of wood. This is a really easy way to get a perfect accurate transition radius. Now for this ramp, 8 feet, um, it's going to be pretty steep, but it's not too steep for a mountain bike. If you're going to be hitting the ramp at lower speeds, I would say 8 feet is probably good. But if you want to hit it re going really fast, then it probably should be a little bit more mellow, maybe 9 foot transition radius. How did I get all the lines drawn on onto the side of the 2x10s? It's time to just start cutting along those lines. For this, I first started out using a, a battery-powered jigsaw. Now, I only have two batteries, so after about two feet into my first cut, it drained an entire battery. So there's no way I'm going to be able to cut this with the limited amount of batteries I have. So, I decided to resort to using a circular saw. Now, a circular saw can't really cut a curve very well. So what I had to do was do a bunch of relief cuts like I'm doing there. This worked fine and it actually ended up being pretty quick. It just it took a little bit of um, trial and error figuring it out how to cut it with this. Mm -hmm. 
Now that I had the two 2x10s cut out into the side shape of the ramp, it was time to figure out a way to join those 2x10s together and make them into one solid piece. What I did for this was I decided to use another 2x10 and cut it to shape and basically use it as a joint to connect both sides and make it super solid. Also, I just wanted to mention that for this entire project, I'm gonna be using three inch long decking screws. Once I had the first side all put together, it was time to trace everything onto another stack of two by tens, cut it all out, screw it all together, and bam, both sides are made. Now I need to connect both sides of the ramp together. For this, I'm gonna use pressure treated two by fours. So what I'm gonna do is measure 33 inches onto three different two by fours, and then cut each one to size. Now, when they're gonna be placed in between each of the sides of the ramp, it's gonna make the total width of the ramp 36 inches. Once the frame was all screwed together, I decided just to carry it outside real quick while it was still light enough for me to carry by myself. Once the frame of the ramp was relocated outside, it's time for the final step, which is the riding surface. For this, I just used the same 2x10s, cut them to size, 3 feet wide, and screwed everything down. The gap I used is about 2 inches, give or take, I just eyeballed it so it all looked about the same. Alright, so now that the ramp is done, it's time to start part 2, the landing. So, a quick trip back to Home Depot, and I picked up some more lumber. Now to measure and cut the sides of the landing. For this, I'm using the same method with the 2x10s as the side of the landing. However, the landing is going to be a much more mellow riding surface than the steeper takeoff was. The landing is not going to have a specific transition radius like the takeoff did. I'm kind of just eyeballing everything until it looks about right. But my main goal was to have a slight curve on the bottom and then a straight area and then at the top I want another rounded curve that way you can case the landing just a little bit and it won't be so abrupt. Once I had the lines all measured out onto the first side I just cut the side just like before with the circular saw and once I had the first side cut I traced it onto the second side so they're both the same. And then once I had both sides cut, I just braced them together just like I did with the, the ramp section. Now the big difference between this landing and the actual ramp was that I decided to make the landing a foot wider than the ramp was, so a total four feet wide. My thought process behind that was that it would give me a little bit more room for error when you're doing like a whip or something so your back tire doesn't completely shoot off the landing and miss um, causing you to wreck or something like that. So I did the same exact thing for the landing. I just braced the sides together using 2x4s. Once that was done, I brought the ramp outside and it was time to attach the riding surface to it. Okay, now working my way up from the bottom of the landing, I used the same exact method that I did on the ramp with the 2x10s as the rotting surface until I got to the very top. The top has a slight curve to it which the 2x10s couldn't bend around, therefore I just used two 2x6s instead of the 2x10 on the top part. This could also be achieved by just ripping a 2x10 down the middle and using each side to conform to the curvature of the landing a little bit better. And now to try it out. After riding the gap for a little while, I eventually found the sweet spot for the distance between the takeoff and the landing. The cool part about this jump though is you can adjust the takeoff and landing to any distance you want based on how much speed you're getting to hit the gap. The center tabletop section of this was super easy to build. All I had to do was cut two 2x6s to size, bridge the gap, and then I used three inch long lag bolts to bolt all four corners together. Once the support 2x6s were in place, 
All that was left to do was attach the riding surface. For this, I did the same thing as I did on the takeoff and the landing. Just put 2x10s in place, screwed it down, and then bam, the tabletop jump was done. Man, I'm super stoked of how this turned out. I love how it looks, and the, one of the cool features about the whole setup to me is just the versatility of the whole thing. All I have to do is undo four lag bolts so I can pop that center section out, and then I can drag the ramp and the takeoff to wherever I want in my backyard. So let's get to it. Let's see if all this hard work paid off and if this thing is fun to ride. Let's do it. Oh yeah, turned out freaking awesome. I'm loving how this thing's riding just how I want it to be. Hey guys, if you like this build and you want to see more builds like this, make sure you let me know in the comments below. I really appreciate your support and if you have any ideas of what I should build next or any good thoughts about it, let me know below in the comments. As always, thanks for watching guys and hopefully this video gives you some tips or some ideas on something for you guys to build. And I'll see you next time. Later. This is what happens when you wear flip-flops to try to mountain bike. Mm -hmm. And then you have to wear these magnificent, magnificent pieces of footwear. <laughs> Let's try this again. <laughs>